Hi, welcome back to my channel. I just want to do a really quick video. I just, just, just finished Why Young Men by Jamil Giovanni. Rage, race, and the crisis of identity. So I wanted to finish this right now because I'm heading to the library to return this book. And sadly, I'm going to return Mark Sakamoto Forgiveness, a gift from my grandparents. I have not gotten to this yet. I picked it up for the read Athon as well as the young men and stuff like that. And I want to read this. I do. Just right now is not. I just have too many other things and too many other books to read at this moment. So I'm going to return this one just so it's out of my house because I feel like it's from the library. I got to return it as soon as possible. I don't want it to get wrecked or lost or anything like that. And then, so I just had like 10 pages of this left and I could not finish it last night because I was so tired. So I'm going to, I just finished this now. We're in the parking lot of Walmart. Me and my son just went and grabbed some things from the dollar store and Walmart. So I just, just finished this. I really like this. I read, excuse me, The Skin We're In by Desmond Cole for the readathon. And I feel like this was a good like companion book to read along with it. Uh, Desmond Cole is a Canadian, a black Canadian male author from activist from Toronto. And this uh, Jamil is also, he is mixed. His mom is white, his dad is black. And he also lives in and was raised in Toronto. So I felt like in The Skin We're In, he told us about different um, people and issues that they were facing, like deportation or uh, men that had been black men, minority men who had been shot by cops or just mistreated by cops because of things like mental illness and stuff like that. And each month he told us like a different story and kind of followed that story and what was happening and ways that things need to change and how race does, is existent here in Canada and what we need to do to change it. Sorry about my son. Uh, where Jamil Giovanni kind of gave a different look on it. He was talking about, like, as a young man, his dad his dad wasn't around very much, and he was looking up to, like, hip-hop artists and gangsters and rappers and stuff like that from, like, the Hollywood scene and looking to them as role models and a view of what it means to be a man and masculinity and stuff like that and how easy it could be to fall into like petty crime, serious crime, whatever, doing crime, drugs, being addicted on the streets, things like that, and how easy that can go, and the kind of programs and things that we need for youth and young men, and to help guide them and give them mentors and stuff like that, especially if they don't have a good male role model at home, in the home kind of thing, and just like community centers where they have a place to go, like youth have a place to go after school, instead of going and getting in trouble, right? And I also like that he's well-traveled. He went to Harvard and became a lawyer, so he's been in the States on and off. And he's also been, he spent a lot of time in Brussels. He talks about the Paris attacks, but I don't know how if he spent time in Paris, but he spent time in Brussels after the Paris attacks in 2016, I believe. And he talked to a lot of Muslims there and it was really interesting to get their perspective and like how the Muslims feel there and in the West and in America and in Canada and not feeling like they belong to their country. And he talks about like how the jihadists and stuff can influence these young men if they don't have proper role models in their lives and mentors and other adults in their lives to talk to about these things that they're seeing and hearing in the news and on the internet and stuff like that. And it was just really interesting, but I also feel like he gave a very, like, balanced view. He wasn't just, like, one side or the other. He was kind of in the middle, and he talks about, with the government and voting, it's like, his one friend feels very, there's some conservative ideas that he really likes, and he wants to vote conservative, but he doesn't feel like he can vote conservative, because he doesn't feel like they are good for him and his identity in the country and for like Muslims and stuff like that and immigration and all these things but then like another friend feels like he leans more to the liberal side of things but there's things about the conservative party that he likes and like how it's not just like one side or the other and uh 
just has that conversation about politics and stuff, which was really interesting. I also like that he kind of makes you think about things like with the Black Lives Matter, he talks about, and this isn't like good or bad, but it, it makes me think like sometimes we just jump on these, these bandwagons. Sometimes we jump on these like hashtags, these things that are trending or we get behind organizations because we feel like the message that they put up is important, like Black Lives Matter. And it's true. And we're like, well, yeah, of course Black Lives Matter. Yeah, of course I'm for that. And I want to be behind that and back that up and stuff like that. But then he's talking about like some of the stuff, like the people who maybe started Black Lives Matter or whatever, some of the like big people there and some of the things they believe in, stuff like that. And it just made me think like, we can't always just jump behind something because on the surface, we think it's a good thing. And I'm not here to say like Black Lives Matter, like the organization is good or bad or anything like that. Again, do like this book is kind of talking about like, do your research and look into it. And maybe there are things that you don't agree with within the organization. And no one person is perfect. No organization is perfect. No church, no mosque, no anything is like perfect. You're not going to agree 100% of the time with any one person, organization, group whatever but that's the importance of doing the research and maybe if you don't maybe if you strongly are against some of the things that these people are for then look for other ways like yeah I believe black lives matter how can I help in my community how can I help minority people in and around me in my kids school at my work in the church or wherever look for ways to help that line up with your values as well anyways I would highly recommend picking this up again it's another Canadian author and he kind of like, he travels the world in this and he, well, Brussels especially, but he goes and talks to these young Muslims in Brussels. He talks to Muslims and black men and minority groups in Canada and in the States and stuff like that. And he has a little bit more of a worldview that way. And I think it's a little bit more balanced and he's talking about like, he's not just like against the cops. He really has like a balanced view of, and I'm, again, like with the Black Lives Matter thing, I'm not here to say like, that we don't need to defund the police. I feel like I need to look into what that even means, defund the police. Because I believe like the cops are people too. Cops make mistakes, but at the end of the day, like they wanna get home to their families too. And on the whole, they're probably good men and women and they are just trying to do their job. And sometimes they are put in very high tense, high stress, scary situations where they're, they are putting their lives on the line. Does that mean that some cops are maybe a little bit trigger heavy or not understanding cultural and social things? I don't know. He talks about ways that we can make policing better and get them connected to their neighborhoods. Cause the people like in the, like the black men and the minority and the Muslims and stuff in these groups are like, we don't like cops. We just don't like them. And they don't, and the cops don't make an effort to be a part of the community and to talk to the community and stuff like that. And he talked to one cop in here that was like, he was gonna become like the chief of police in Toronto and stuff like that. And the things that this guy had like a bad relationship with cops as a kid and he wanted to change that. So he became a cop and he was working really hard to change that from within, but then he ended up getting, or he ended up resigning after somebody else became the chief of police. It was a really, really interesting conversation about the good you can do like, as a person from the outside looking and seeing discrimination by cops and how if you feel called to you can become a cop and try to make changes from the inside now not everyone's called to be a cop not everyone wants to be a cop i'm not saying you have to be a cop to make changes but that's just one example of it and how we can work with the police and the law and try to make changes and make policing better for young men black men muslim men and minorities and people in general Anyways, highly recommend. Definitely like a five out of five for like a nonfiction story. And I'm also turning, just on a quick side note, I'm also turning The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager, which is my first ever Riley Sager book that I picked up for the Currently Reading Book Club with Allie from Mrs. Dunn Reads and I loved it. It was really good. It was very thrilling. As it said, I kept trying to guess like what the twist was going to be and I didn't guess it. So that's good. I don't know. I going between a four and a five on that but yeah so that was why young men and why I think you should pick it up I think it's really good and has some really good conversations that's my perspective as a white woman anyways thanks for watching and I'll see you later bye